Hey, look what we have found A big sound in a small town Far away from the bright lights They're making music every night Discover what is all around A big sound, a big sound. A big sound. Listening to Big Sound Small Town with Sandy Carlton. Big Sound Small Town. I'm in the Earl Scrug Center and I'm with the band Two Track. Um, they're here touring the southeast and they're from Sheridan, Wyoming. Hi guys. Hey. How's it going? Hi. Good. Now let me ask you, how do you get to Shelby, North Carolina from Sheridan? <laughs> well there's a there's a guy named Tim Southard out here and he, uh, <laughs> he kind of told us about some places so we were uh, looking to fill uh, some gigs on our trip out here, and uh, we're going to be at the Dragonfly Wine Market. And we've been staying with Tim and Ann and went up to Lake James. Oh, yeah. um, spent a beautiful day up on Lake James. It's a beautiful lake. It mm-hmm. is. It really is. Um, oh, yeah, you guys played the back 42, didn't we you? We played mm-hmm. the back yeah. 40. <laughs> that was um, a hoot. Y'all playing the Dragonfly tomorrow night, right? Yep. Or no. tonight. Oh yeah, I get them confused. I can't. I can't. I, it's hard. To, you, you know how hard it is to keep your dates. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's the six They o'clock. rely on me for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, we do. I, 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 I'm <laughs> saying, I rely on section. other band members. To, you know you're supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. I didn't even know we were playing. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Fred texts and he says, where are we playing this weekend? It's like, we're not playing anywhere this weekend, Fred. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking yeah, in. I'm kind of and the big too. joke is, Dave always says, you know, we got this thing called a website <laughs> that you can go to, and it's got all our dates on there. But all the info. It's easier just to ask him. See, I know I, I, I'm, I'm looking at, at him, and, you know, um, uh, it's probably because um, – He's like me. We've kind of aged on a little bit, so sometimes, <laughs> um, you know, we're not the, uh, my people. Three <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys are really young. Man, 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 um, I can tell that he has the job that I usually have in the band. The, the old guy. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. We were just pulling up, and there was a lady trying to parallel park, and she was an older woman, and she was not gonna. She's not doing a good job. And we were we were parking right right in front of her, and the conversation came up with, you know, when we're gonna have to take Fred's keys away. <laughs> we just had that conversation on the way in. So Fred's well, like, I don't like this. He's gonna, yeah, he's, so he's gonna murder us right now. Yeah, yeah. I told him I will fight. I will whine. <laughs> And then I'll give in. <laughs> See, that's the old school way. Yeah. You know? It'll be like driving Miss Daisy. We'll just yeah. drive you around. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> not bad at all. So I guess I guess you guys are in a van coming down from Sharon. You all have jobs along the way. We so, uh, we flew out this. Yeah, time. we oh, flew okay. out. Actually, we we fly to Denver. And it's okay. a direct flight. We sure. drove to Atlanta. I drove to Atlanta, and then we were at Skunk Fest last I'm, weekend. I'm sorry, so. you had to drive to Atlanta. Through Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um. Uh, why, why don't you introduce yourself individually so people will know who we're talking with? Uh, my name is Dave Hubner, and I play cello and electric guitar in the two tracks. And I'm Julie Hubner, Dave's wife. Been married for a couple of years, and uh, yeah. I'm Fernando Serna, and I play drums and backup singing. I'm Taylor Phillips. I play bass and backup vocal. Sure. I saw you guys at WNCW yesterday uh, uh, and found out that he's a railroad, wasn't a railroad engineer. Yeah. How does that, how does that translate to being a musician? <laughs> it's a lot better here, but it doesn't pay as well. <laughs> <laughs> Insurance sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but yeah. you asked. Yeah. <laughs> I am having fun. Yeah, yes. that's good. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's good. That's all. Um, I've known one other, two other railway employees and another engineer and um, uh, he thought it was kind of a high pressure job. <laughs> it, it could be hours where you, you are called 24 seven. So you, you, you do well money wise, but yeah. you're gone. A lot. Yeah, that's pretty much what. Yeah. So now you're playing band, you're gone all the time too. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, lot more, a lot more fun here though. But it is a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So, okay. Fill me in on how this all started, particularly in Sheridan. I mean, it's not known as a hotbed for music. In the I mean, you're the only band. I even did a little research, and basically you're the only people that come out of Sheridan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Small town. There's I, not very many bands in Wyoming. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, right. you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, I like your big sound small town because they always say Wyoming is one big small yeah. one. Big one small big town. small town. Yeah. You know, it's like if there's musicians sure. in Laramie or wherever else, we know them all. <laughs> yeah, but you have to drive like to find them, right? I mean, oh, yeah. it's not yeah. like okay, yeah. I'm in Sheridan, and we got like oh, I don't know, six, seven bands, and we kind of interact. That's not happening there, is it? Well, well, yeah. there's some local bands in Sheridan warriors. for sure. There's there's definitely some local musicians, they, but really yeah, you know everybody. Not yeah. touring, not touring. Yeah. Just local yeah, they bands. stay local. Yeah. They, they would yeah, like they, to tour. It, it's hard to <laughs> to get the connections. It's hard. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's not that they wouldn't want to. Wyoming, well, I mean, I mean, you know, it's not a hotbed. I mean, no. mm-hmm. you know, it's it's not like. Okay, talk to me about your while we're on that. Talk to me about your <clears> producer <throat> and how that happened of your last record. You want to? Oh, we we got uh, Will Kimbrough sure. produced the uh, last three albums. Right, I know Will. And, so. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, you know, virtuoso player, sure. amazing producer. Um, always has great ideas. Um, but like Dave says, his goal is not to to change what we're doing; it's to enhance what we're doing. Yeah, but and how did you guys get 
Mm-hmm. So a friend Viola, right? Yeah, she Viola Kraus uh, through Skunk Fest, right? Originally, mutual it? friend of ours. Yeah, I'd met her um, when she was traveling out west in Wyoming, and then we'd stayed in touch. She checked out our band plan and liked her, what Music we were lover. doing. Yeah, and she she's close with Will and and Jess, and so. She was like, you know, who you should connect with is Will Kimbrough for, for your next album, and and. Uh, and I was like, the Will Kimbrough. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh yeah, the Will Kimbrough, because so he was starting, and, to, starting yeah, to produce. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he, yeah, he's actually a pretty good guy. Yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah. He's, beside being very, very talented, um, in fact, <laughs> he just used a picture of that uh, big sound small town took of him at the Earl Scruggs Festival with nice. uh, Emmy Lou. Mm-hmm. In right. fact. In fact, on when I was getting there, Emmy Lou was doing her sound check early in the morning on Sunday morning, and Will was singing uh, Gulf Coast Highway with her, mm-hmm. and I swear I thought Willie Nelson was wow. singing that with her. Mm-hmm. Will sounded just like Willie Nelson. Huh. Willie Nelson's not supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, when it she had a closed sound check, but just as soon as it was over, I got myself down there and I, I talked. Wow, man, you sounded just like Will. I said, yeah, I had to work on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Will. Yeah. Usually he'd do, like, solo performers sure. and then get a band together, you yeah. know. So I want to say we were maybe the, the first full band that he did. Yeah. And, and, you know, we didn't, he didn't know us. And, you know, he he signed on to have us come out. And, you know, and it was like that first album we did. Ten songs in yeah. five days, yeah. Yeah. and um, and he's like, okay, yeah, we can do this again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, we all had a lot of fun. The first uh, we worked with him on our Postcard Town album, yeah. and uh, it just went super smooth, and we all had a good time. And so they were really excited when we reached back out for Cheers to Solitude, and then once again with this new one yeah. it's a complicated uh, life Will, Will's an easy guy to work with he's yeah. great yeah, he, he, he just really makes is. us feel so comfortable um, yeah. so, well I wondered how that came about I mean it's yeah, uh, yeah it was a lucky connection yeah, yeah. well I mean, yeah, I mean you know the music is pretty much connection yes. I mean, yeah. that is yeah. so, so three of you guys grow up in Wyoming these uh, two these we guys. Did. yeah we born did. and raised Taylor uh-huh. and Fred yeah, yeah. Yeah, I moved away out of high school um, and was away for about 10 years, and then I moved back. And uh, Fred's been a lifer. Yeah, 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 just family came from Mexico, sure. and, and yeah. uh, we stayed there. And yeah. I'm one of seven, I'm the youngest, but we all were railroaders, and then uh, my dad was into music. Yeah. And my family, they, they don't play it, but they appreciate what yeah, they sure. hear. And then, of course, I had to be the loud drummer. Oh, yeah. um, uh, that is one of the things. There's two instruments that I found that when your children play them, you wish they'd have chosen something else. Yeah. That's violins and drums. Yeah. Yeah. Banjos. Yeah. But, but you got to realize we're in the Earl Scrug Center and this is Shelby, North Carolina. So banjos oh, are kind man. of accepted. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no matter how bad they kick me out of here. You know, there's always, there's always hope, you know, yeah. that. that it, they'll be your old strugs. Yeah, That's the yeah. only mindset you can get with it because really you'd like to see you know, that banjo in a dust with an accordion. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I play accordion, so I, I, I love accordion. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, you know, accordion is accordion is just about as a diverse instrument as you can get. Um, I made a mistake of telling someone I did that, and she was a um, <laughs> a polka playing accordion player. I've never played any of that in my life, you know, and it's like, oh, can you go accompany me on jobs? And I was like, uh, I don't know any <laughs> polka music, you know? She said, well, I'll teach you. And I said, why don't I go play guitar while you do that, you know? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want on my resume that I'm a polka player. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> but then I went with her on some jobs and they paid well and it's like, because they have their own little niche, you know? Yeah. Where, where I guess they pay good because there's not that many people doing it. Right. Well, Cajun music and Mexican music, oh. accordion is, along with the saxophone, you, sure. you don't get any better. No, you don't. To hear what you're hearing, it, it's a oh, great sound. Yeah, it I is. I love it. That's what I grew up yeah. with. Yeah. yeah, me too, with uh, uh, a lot of Cajun accordion. Yeah, 
Cajuns like rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just that lovely, and the, the beat is sometimes a header and yeah. back. Yeah. It, and it's it's, a, it's an infectious, it's almost a dance groove every song. Yes, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what yeah. way it was really set up as a dance hall instrument to begin with. Everybody get together on Saturday night and let's dance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's the callers, the dance callers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Of course, around here we have more of a fiddle driven. Contra square dancing type, awesome music, too. Which, is, which is kind of the same rhythmically, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know one other cello player uh, in a band. Do you know another one other than you? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's Rashad Eggleston who yeah, does well, his he, solo he, stuff. He he's, yeah. he's a little. <laughs> he doesn't bizarre. count. And, well, he doesn't uh. count because number one, <laughs> you know, he's he's done bluegrass. He's done a little bit of everything. He's like the, yeah. The, Iconic, I guess, will be the mm-hmm. best way of playing. So we don't. There's count. okay. There's uh, <laughs> there's Joy Adams in Big Richard. Okay, she's awesome. Um, there's the Do you guy know Big in, Richard. There's yeah. the guy in Dead South, um, but he plugs more. There's Ben Soleil. Yeah, Ben don't count either. Yeah, you know, Mike then, Block, uh, but he doesn't count. Joe He's too Pond. good. I know Joe Pond. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. So, uh, but Joe not Pond. many. Yeah, it's a it's a unique thing. It's it's you know it's expanding a little more. There's a few more of us True. out there. Well, I, okay. Now you don't get to play cello like you play cello without that not being a big part of your background. Yeah. Via schooling or something. I mean, we can pick up guitars. We can pick up basses. We can pick up drums. Yeah. But it's not like I'm gonna sit here at home and learn to play cello, you know. <laughs> so I, I know there's an educational part to that, right? Yeah, my parents, uh, you know, what made us play music growing up, and uh, so my brother played piano and I played cello and private lessons uh, once a week for ten years, and then went to got a scholarship in high school to go to a. a good high school that had a music program and and had an orchestra and so I did orchestra and chamber music and all that kind of stuff and played in competitions and you know I was growing up in LA so there was there was a lot of competition out there and um, yeah I mean did it until I was 17 and and then I was like I don't want to go to classical music school like my brother did he kept on and I was like I don't want to do that I just want to go be a ski bum for a while and yeah, uh, hang out in the mountains for a while. And, uh, and so I took a break from it, um, for eight or nine years. And, uh, and then during that I started teaching myself how to play guitar and then kind of that led into writing songs and playing Americana music, playing original music yeah. and brought it back, brought the cello back into sure. the mix. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I know so many musicians who got their start playing Something that's not really incorporated in yeah. music, but but then even they even bring it back out at points. I mean, I play with different people who, as a novelty, sometimes will do something that um, is different than than the standard setup because somebody knows how to play yeah. a trombone, you know, something right. like that. So, which is really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I guess the rest of you guys came about it like like everyone else does I want to be a you know do you have influences I you know my friends all play guitar and so I just when I was like 15 we do like you sit around the campfire and I just try to keep up you know so it was just learning songs and swapping songs so that was kind of when I first started with guitar but I always played piano but um, yeah I started on piano pretty young my mom is a really really talented musician and uh, she got me started young, and I, I took lessons for quite a while when I was younger, and then just kind of transitioned to guitar and played guitar for a long time, and then bass is the new, the new task. But, yeah. well, when, we, when our bass player, our old bass player left, we called Taylor and said, hey, you want to play bass for us? He's like, I guess I'll learn how to play bass. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. One of the things I learned is I'm kind of a forced bass player. Um, yeah. It would not be my first choice, but guess what? There's a whole lot more work as a yeah. bass player than there is as, as another guitar player, yeah. you know, or another. And drummers always get to work. Mm-hmm. You know? Fred Fred works a lot around town too, yeah. you know, locally with <laughs> yeah. different bands that play locally. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Yeah. But you started when you were a kid. I yeah. did. Yeah, my dad playing, and his brothers would come and visit from Mexico, and they all played. Um, different instruments a lot of them were in uh, uh, mariachi bands yeah. so 
the first base I learned to play with the guy playing Bajo Sexto, which yeah. is the beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, my dad wanted me to learn how to play accordion, and I and I started to, but drums. When I heard drums, I just I loved the tone, sure. the different and. We'd go to Mexican bands, and I would I would just study it. I'd sit on the side of the stage and just watch, you know, what he's doing with the kick drum, and then right. where's that snare coming? Those kind of things, and yeah. just kind of went from there. And mom and dad supported it, and yeah, it's a loud instrument, but they were they were super supportive. They they never complained about it. And, and, uh, and Fred was I, playing I, bands at like what thirteen? Yeah, I, I <laughs> or in they, bars playing in bars. My mom wasn't crazy about it, but I play, started playing Mexican music. Yeah. And uh, I, my mom, she was like, yeah, I don't think he should go. And my dad was like, well, I'm with him. And, and they trusted me, and, and, and I, didn't, I didn't ruin that trust. And so I got to play with my uncles. And I was, I was fortunate there were a lot of older players that trusted me to, yeah. to play, and I learned a lot from it. I was grateful for that. Well, you know, as far as drum goes, you know, one, this is one of my pet peeves about school. If they don't teach, they take music out of schools these days. If they would only teach a rhythm class, yeah. you know, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Then, then people could possibly clap together at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how it's yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. if you do nothing else with music in school, uh, yeah. Yeah. teach, you know, yeah. Yeah. teach basic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rhythm. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the crowd yeah. always speeds up. No, they do. Yes. Oh, they do. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. or, or, or they get the offbeat that they don't need to be Right, on. right. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah. so. Yeah. But the wonderful thing is, with, I, I also play congas and tabales, yeah. and we're playing some world beat bands, and I mean, I'm not great at it, but I continue to learn it. But again, it's those tones, and and there's a lot of times where, yeah, drumming, you could you get hired a lot if, if you... You didn't have to be spectacular. I always tell kids that I would teach it'd be like if your timing is on, yeah. you're going to get called again. Sure, because meter. every band they're going to yeah. they're going to say, okay, yeah, his timing is on, and that's very important. Meter in pocket. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's same thing with bass players too. Yeah, exactly. Lead bass exactly. players, and there has been a very good lead bass player in this town, <clears throat> but nobody likes to work with him. So you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Word, yeah. Uh, that that pocket players, both drummers and bass players. Can do, get a lot of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, this being the first band I played bass in, Fred was real quick to to let me know when I was playing like a guitarist. It's key. Job, absolutely. Right? I do no. because um, I've had to learn that very mm -hmm. same lesson. Sure. You know, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. know, it's. Uh, He's like, shut the less fuck is, up. Less is more. <laughs> less is more. Don't rush the beat. Or else yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And if yeah. you're doing shuffle beats, you know, like a lot of times the bluegrass, and you have drums, um, if 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 it speeds up, I mean, drummers can play pretty fast on a shuffle. Yeah. They yeah. Can, yeah. Guitar really playing, hard. doing picking, that's a lot of, and there are great players that can do it, but when they're singing. You know, it affects them all, sure, obviously, yeah. cause, and so it's always. It. But Taylor's very good about it. He's yeah. excellent about it. Yeah. Well, he's just zero in, and 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 yeah, yeah. and everybody's great. Timing, tempos, everybody locks in. They focus, yeah. and it's. Wonderful. I had played in a band uh, playing electric and acoustic guitar with Fred before, so I really yeah. respected him as a musician. Wow. And so when he tells me that, I'm. Sure. I'm going to listen, you know. Oh, yeah, that, great, that's awesome. He's a great player. Who's telling me something? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah he's yeah. like, you know, 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 but then. Well, plus Fred will cut me. Do it with a smile. I'll do it with a smile. You won't even know what's going on. You won't even know what's going on. Uh, tell me about your writing process. Um, well, for me, I um, sometimes the, I will get an idea or feel the inspiration for a song, and it all just kind of happens in the moment. Um, playing, with, you know, strumming a guitar, I always write on the guitar. Sure. Um, but also, sometimes I just get the inspiration to write because um, I've also always liked just writing and not necessarily writing with the, the idea of putting it to music. And so I will just write um, whenever I feel like there's something there that I want to sure. get down on paper. And um, for instance, one of the songs on the new album started as me just trying to write um, the best, simplest, most direct, you know, poem about like the sunrise in Baja that I had this picture of that I was looking at 
from the last trip that we'd been on. And uh, and I did two little stanzas of that, and that became the beginning of Canyon Wren. Right. Yeah. And then I just had to finish the song because all of a sudden I realized, like, I really like those words. Right. I wonder if I can set that to music somehow, you know? And then, so I do kind of like that process because it sometimes if you separate it from the music initially then you can write what you really want to write and try sure. to get that as good as possible and then you can always tweak it to fit the music to fit the rhythm of the music you know well, later that's kind of reverse editing but yeah yeah, it would, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it all happens kind of at the same time you might just be strumming yeah, a chord correct. and then it flows out you know, you know i but, have this theory that um songs ideas not the songs particular but either yeah. float in the air mm-hmm. and if you don't grab it he'll grab it or yeah. someone else will but yeah. you'll admit, you know I also have it that different instruments have X number of songs in them for me but then you may acquire it for right. me and then it has X number in there for you right yeah right. So, but, but, but it's, it's like but there's no more in here for Sandy. You know, it's like, nah, you're done. You know, move to a different instrument or something. Right, so right. Point. Yeah. Do y'all collaborate? That's, we we uh, help each other edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, like, you know, with everybody, you know, we'll pass songs around and stuff. And we were just, you know, WNCW yesterday talking about how we really, um, like, we'll start off with a pretty basic song and then the arranging process sure. they'll totally change and that's it's fun it's really yeah. fun to get yeah you know, we've got a home studio practice yeah. studio and sometimes the band the sound of the whole band and the drums and the what we're going to do with all those parts can totally change the change, feel change. Yeah. Song yeah. From when the song we, and we might try so. five different styles before yeah. we hit one and it's like oh actually that works and so the other thing too is you got to keep an open mind because you've listened to our albums and it's you know we do a lot of different stuff right. and it's not even just a song it's when we're doing a new album how is you know what how does this album relate to itself right. and it's a story within a story mm-hmm. and so if we've got three songs that are you know this these are really similar in some way you know right. Um, we got to think outside of the box, and yeah. it's just a fun process. Do you ever have them like, yeah, we love the song, but it doesn't fit? Like if you're going to record, mm-hmm. I got the song, you know, it's, it's really good, but it really doesn't fit the, or it doesn't flow with the material we're doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, yep. You're just like, yeah, man, I really like record the song, but yeah. it really, it so doesn't we, fit. It doesn't stay yeah. with the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll either leave it for another album, or mm-hmm. often we'll go in and say how how. What changes can we make to, to make do this? Fit. And then every time we do that, we love it that much better. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always yeah. better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there have been times we go to the head of the studio, we're flying to Nashville, and I know myself, there, there's a part where the bridge isn't quite right. right. And, it, and, and that could be me. It's like there's just something that's bothering me, and I can't quite get there. I don't know the feel of it, and I will talk with them, and we're all thinking about it. And then it's like you get into the studio, and... And it just clicks. Something yeah. happens. Somebody does something different. It's like that's where you just go. I just play that right. on the drums. It's like, oh, wow, well, look, there it is. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it sometimes does the producer is really good at that too. That's yeah. one of the yeah. things I've learned about being in bands along my life is sometimes you need somebody from outside to go. Yes. You oh, know, yeah. you, yes. you, 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 look, talking about the part that somebody's just not right, yep. and they can see it. That mm-hmm. as a collective group, that sometimes you all think. You become to think kind of in the same way, so it so it becomes mm-hmm. like yeah. you're almost blind to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Will's been very helpful with and that. Sean Sullivan, of, too. And Sean the Sullivan, too. Engineer. Engineer. Yeah. Engineer. Yeah. He's, yeah, genius. Because he's, he's like, well, we'll, we'll have like uh, you know, there's been times where we'll have a stop that comes back around every every verse or whatever through the whole song, and then they're just like. And Will will be, down, like, right? super nice about it. And he'll be like, so, is, I mean, is there a reason you really want to just <laughs> keep stopping on the on the set? It's like, well, this is a song in seven, and so we put a stop on the seven every single time. He's like, well, you know, I mean, just because it's in seven doesn't mean you have to beat somebody over the head so with it. So now I stop and they, they keep going, you know? Yeah, just yeah. the yeah. same thing where, where like, the one song bit, where yeah. it's like yeah. the, the drums keep going, they stop. It was too but harsh. That, they heard and, this and it's harshness like, to you it. You still get the best of both worlds, right. but with just the shuffle continuing to go and the kick drum going, but they're doing the stop. The seven's there, right. but there's also something. Yeah. There's another layer on top of right. it. You're moving it. Yeah. And then when you do finally, I finally stop with them, 
it 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 makes a better point. Yeah, it's like, oh, happens. okay, yeah. that's sure. that's where it should be. The beginning and that's kind of the with the dynamics of the whole thing. Yeah, you know, it's something a little bit. Sometimes it's just a small something exactly. like that that makes yep. all the difference. It does. In the world. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I remember one specifically past my prime on the Cheers to Solitude album. Cause it started out as kind of more of a a one five country yeah. folky song, and it was starting to sound a little too much like some of the other songs. And we Dave talked to me, and we kind of worked on. And then I'd ended up being where my bass line is like a sixties R and B, you know, bass line to it, and it kind of opened up a total different window. And then it started to sound different than all the other songs on the album. Yeah, now it's, it's one, one of our favorite songs. ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's totally changed. changed. Yeah. Are, are you good at knowing which songs people like? For the most part, I mean, I think there's still a few that we really like that don't that nobody ever requests. But. <laughs> this album, we couldn't pick a single, and we've got a radio promoter and a publicist. And when we came out of there, we're like, I don't, we don't even know oh, what I know. the single that's, is. That, that, and I pick wrong. I've had songs, you know, I think kind of songs great. Then I'll have, I'll be totally off, and somebody will like, you know, different songs that I didn't really even care for. Also, right. I. I, and maybe y'all, and I hope you don't, I have songs from my past that haunt me that people still want to hear that I wrote at a really young age that I'm almost embarrassed about now. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, please don't anybody. <laughs> yeah. I well, hope I did not do that at a campfire <laughs> at, at any point in my life that somebody's telling because every once in a while, you st- hey, how about, how about you? you still, I have a song yeah. called Boy Guards Bullets. You still did Boy Guards Bullets? It's like, Somebody else. (laughs) Well, our biggest hit is "Lost in This Canyon," and we got to play. It's like it's always requested. So I always make the joke, and we we, fortunately we still like playing it. I don't know, twenty years from now, maybe not. But I leave it off the set list on purpose, and and I get I get some looks from these guys. I'm like, we're gonna play everything, but. Canyon, right. or we're gonna play everything we lost in this canyon tonight, and they're like, or, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. But then somebody yeah. requested it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody will ask for it anyway, and then it's well, like, all right, we're playing every it. every time. You know, one of the things that I've always thought about is like a one hit wonder person, or maybe two two hits, mm-hmm. and you're going and having to do those songs yep. for the rest of your <laughs> life. Yeah. Yep. And you know, you quit liking them like twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, like, like 20 years ago, you had big royalty checks coming in for yeah. this, but now you've got those 16 cent royalty checks coming <laughs> yeah, in. Oh, yeah. So I'm not as fond of it as I was, you know. Yeah. Right yeah. here, I gotta do it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like, I remember yeah. hearing a songwriter that said, Be careful with the songs you write because you will never know what appeals to the masses. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the yeah. truest things I've, I've learned. Uh, and through, through playing music and podcasting, one of the things I've learned is it does not matter how bad a band or a song or a musician is there is somebody going this is the greatest thing I've ever heard <laughs> you know, I love this yeah. you know why can't these guys be successful well they suck <laughs> but, 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 but you find them really good and it's like the podcast or, or like things I've cut I have a real big following in Brazil Brazil I don't know why I don't know anyone there you know I don't know why they're interested in American musicians but like I look at my you know you get the analytics and I look Brazil you know? right. it's like, like, mm-hmm. it's yeah. neat yeah it's there's cool. so- South America or whatever. Or yeah, we've had we had a song get on the algorithmic thing on Spotify, and yeah. all of a sudden it went all over the world, and people were listening to it everywhere. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, we ha- yeah, we have like 50 yeah. followers in Poland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange how that is. Yeah. It, it really yeah. is. I mean, I've known people who have made European tours based on the fact that they sold a whole much. You know, they're they're bigger there than they are here. So mm-hmm. they, you know, the highlight of their year every year is their you know, trip to Ireland or their trip to England or yeah. India, you mm-hmm. know, so, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. I, I, do you guys know the Victor Wooten, the Wootens, Victor Wooten? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. From, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a guy. There's a busy base. Yeah, there's a, there's <laughs> I love a guy it. that lives here. And actually, two people uh, from Asheville who went with Victor Wooten to India. And they went straight up without any contacts, and they got there, and they they were in India. They had this kind of big budget that he had laid out, and nobody would let them play. 
and and they were like they were like it's like, it was John Stickley's uh, trio, fiddle player, uh, Andy Palmer, Snake Oil, really fine musicians, and and nobody in India would let them play after they'd spent the money to set this all up, and then on the day they were leaving, some guy came and said, hey. Uh, if you guys come back again, I'll book you a bunch of places. And you're like, I don't know if we're coming back again. Have you ever been to India? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, man, but they did go back and then they got to play. Mm-hmm. But, um, so, yeah, you, you just never, never know. know. You just mm-hmm. never know. Even traveling across the states, it's like, we'll, we'll still do those shows where it's like, we don't show up in a big city and we're hoping we're going to be selling tickets at the door. And some shows are better than others. Yeah, so some of the best shows, though, are. are Places, you know, sometimes yeah. rewarding things like a little place like the Back Forty or something, sure. where you're playing for some other musicians and yeah. people are just really tuned into the music. Versus, you know, you might play a venue in a big city that looks good on your tour schedule, sure. and one person shows up. Yeah, oh, you know, yeah. And, and, and any <laughs> musician who ever tells you that they've never played, you know, for just themselves or yeah. or the bar owner is probably a liar. Yeah, you know? I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, or he's not a real musician. Yeah. You know, he just yeah. makes this up. You know, oh, man, every crowd I've ever played for has been huge. Like, yeah, yeah, not only you got to pay your dues. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're still paying our dues. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> T- trust me, one of my I was tickled to death to be on. Merle Fest one time and I played at like 10 o'clock in the morning in the pouring rain and there's six people standing there watching <laughs> you know and it's like wow this is kind of a big let down you know? yeah. you know, I, thought, I, thought, I thought this would be really really monumental in the you know it's um, right. it's rain kind of like know. the day of making days yeah like, yeah we played a festival out in Tennessee and yeah, they got ended up getting rained out uh, later in the night or the next day, and but you know it was a we thought hey, it's a big festival. It's got multiple yeah. stages. Got sure. some big bluegrass headliners. Okay, flew out and for it. Flew out just for that, just one off kind of thing. We get there, we set up, get going on the stage, and I don't know, fifteen, fifteen, fifteen twenty, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're just like, wow, they're taking a hit on this one. Right? Yeah. you know. <laughs> Was the headliner because they didn't have very many. No, there was nobody at that. The gal, uh, the the uh, oh Rhonda Vincent, Rhonda Vincent, yeah, and her yeah. and her group. Yeah. It just it was yeah, it didn't work out. And then for the them. next day they got rained out and they lost their lost True. their whole I thing mean, on that one. But I mean, most music productions are hit and miss. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, the big acts I'm sure always make money, but you know that's a that's a pretty big expense when you put together something like that. It's, you know, um, when festivals first start out, it's good that somebody has big, deep pockets because mm-hmm. a lot of times they don't make money even in the first few yeah. years. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, we've seen them come and go, and oh, yeah. people try to start too big and then yeah. lose their ass, and yeah. yeah, it's a tough thing. It is. I mean, even, you know, fairly local big shows, you know, it's still a, it's still a I know a guy, and he said, you know, I get like two or three that really I make a bunch of money on, and then covers for the ones that, you know, I don't. And he said, my whole goal is to just basically break even. Yeah. But, but if, you know, and I'll, two or three of the ones I do, a uh, guy down here at Pearl at Don Gibson Theater, he's that way. You know, I got like two shows that hold me for the year. And he said, I could book more shows, but I'd lose more money. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a hard business. Yeah, it really music is. Music business is a hard, dirty, nasty business. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, it's uh, still to this day, uh, everyone but the musicians themselves, they just take away the tiny piece of the pie where, you know, somebody else is taking away the big money. Mm-hmm. But it's always been that way. I mean, yeah. if you go back to blues players, you know, they, even, they just stole their, you know, royalties right and left so yeah, yeah. and like we all have to be on Spotify but yeah you know, you've, you've seen the Spotify royalty checks yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. so 
Yeah, I get a magnifying glass. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they can. I wonder. How I didn't they know can there could be so many zeros, you know, yeah. after the decimal sure. point. Yeah, I, mean, I wonder how they can even afford to print out. Like, <laughs> they're making enough money, right? Honestly, they can afford to print out those to make you feel a little better. They're like, like, yeah, yeah they're I'm like, on the radio, man. I, you know, yeah. Yeah. they're playing my stuff. They're like, uh, can you do paperless invoices? <laughs> yeah, and even like the the BMI checks, you know, they're like, we're oh, not yeah. going to send them till they because that shows till they it get all. To, oh yeah. And you're like, wow, not, look at all this. until they get to $50. Yeah. So it's like, oh, man, i got to wait a few years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And then, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I've seen, I've seen, uh, I used to, yeah, I, I still show, like, the 16-cent royalty uh, checks to people who think they want to be a musician for a living. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, are you sure you really want to do this? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Being young helps, so. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, I had a lot of people give me that advice. Are you sure yeah. <laughs> this is what you want to do? Do it, do it while you're young. Yeah. Trust me, because um, it gets harder as you get older. You also have less opportunities as you as you age. I mean, it's a sad state that is that way. Right. But you know, uh, it's you know, if you're in Nashville and you reach a certain age, it's not going to continue to happen for you. Mm-hmm. Right. You know. Well, and they know they have you too. I think one of the things that that I've I've learned in talking with all of them, they know that they have you. And when when you when you get on Spotify, you know you're not going to make anything, nope. but it's the only way to get known. It is. And the cool thing is, some of the festivals they will do a Spotify playlist for that festival. And I've had people say, "Wow, that's." Because they weren't they they didn't even know about the festival, but they're hearing all the groups. Right. Each group will have two songs on that playlist, right. and I myself. I'll yeah. listen to it and be like, wow, this, this is really going to be good. I didn't know those groups. Right. So that part, though yeah. you're getting screwed, yeah. that's really helping you. Or at least it, it's it, helping it, it somebody. Is. You hope you're one of the ones that's helping, but at least it's helping some of the groups. Because yeah. some of them do go on, and they get right. known that way. Yeah. That's how people can can it's, can hear. It is actually, since radio is fairly non-existent like, compared to what it used to be, that is people's, you know, the iTunes, the Spotify's. Yeah. That is their their radio, basically. I mean, yeah. that's where everybody gets their music. Yeah. And if you're not there, yeah. no one's going to find you ever. Exactly. Yeah. And if you are, if you do make a playlist, a lot of times somebody will go, "Man, I really like that band. I've never heard of them before." Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm bad to to do stuff like that on Spotify. I go through um, the you know, there's so many options you can do to learn new music on there, and I'll listen to a lot of those just to hear something new and hopefully find someone I like. Yeah. 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 If you're yeah. not Neil Young, you better be on there. Yeah. yeah. Well, Neil's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Neil can, Neil can, he can do oh, it. He, he can afford it. He can do what he wants. <laughs> he can. Yeah. He can. Uh, Cause I don't, the, and the sad thing is I know like on bad band camp that you get to keep your money, mm-hmm. but then your, your audience is, um, a tenth of what it would be yeah. on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and it's, that's great if you want to put sixteen dollars in your in your checking account as opposed to sixteen cent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But neither one of them are going. You know, it's, it's yeah. not a get rich yeah. option there. No, you know, and, and you know, basically, I see still a big part of staying alive is your merchandise about as much as your what mm-hmm. you get for your. Mm-hmm. Yeah, playing, you know? that's that's oh, yeah. what we find on the road. Is Put your just, money in good yep. looking t-shirts. Yep. good looking. He know. does them. Yeah. He does. He's yeah. a good graphic designer. Yeah. Yeah. Good <laughs> t-shirts, vinyl sure. records, yeah. CDs. Every band needs a graphic designer. We have we have <laughs> really do. little whiskey please flasks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know that's 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 a big part of of the income. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a huge part. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean. It, I don't know. We've I can't remember exactly what kind of percentages, but I mean it's it's made up twenty five thirty percent of sure. our band income some yeah. years. You know, I mean, I mean it really, and so many and bands that's... stink at it. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I mean and, and then when you do, I don't like this band. But I hate their t-shirts. You know, or, yeah. you know, I, 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 I hate what they got going on here. So you Dang. Know, I don't know if I really want to spend. Well, we have a T-shirt for you. I hope you like it. I'm worried now. I hope you like it. <laughs> Here, can I get this foot out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> 
good, Julie. Really. <laughs> oh, I'll buy you the first beer. <laughs> Uh, that's one of the most fun, fun things I've had in here a long time. <laughs> I also think, though, too, you know, I mean, the the it's interesting where things go. Uh, it always comes up to the listener, and there, there are some genres of music that uh, modern now that I just can't take. Yeah, I, but well. that's me. But it becomes the thing. It sure. is. It is what people really like, it, and it's tough to compete against. And I'll out and say it. Uh, you know, pop country. Sure. Wow. That's that's what that's one of them that that. Um, yeah, I'm, and I'm glad people enjoy it. You know, I, I am because that's that's what music's about. And I've always said that. My True. wife. Mm-hmm. My wife reminds me. But but you know, some of it can be as deep as a birdbath. And yeah. and but it, if it if it appeals to them and you're thinking gosh dang it man that's awesome but how can we get there right. but maybe you don't want to get there because it's not you yeah. Yeah. but that you know the, the listeners are very important they they are you know they're big for it's us there, and they, support they, us yeah, they, it is they they're are. very important and uh, fans yeah, are what keep us going really yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's, that's really why we what do I yeah, tell yeah. people you need the, these people sitting back here behind you yeah. are the type yes. of people that you need yes yeah. They're, they're every bit as important as yeah. as producers yeah. as as yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. without listeners yeah. you know oh, yeah. without yeah. fans yeah. Yeah. you know we just, oh, four of us five of us will sit here and play music back and forth for each other you know yeah, yeah. I mean, so so yeah. it's people yeah. people that yeah. like what you do yeah. you know and you and you hope there's some that do you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But you're going to do it anyway. That's the sad part. Exactly. But yeah. but, but but me saying that, I, I take I I'm with pop country. It, it, I'm not saying it, it's I'm being older, and so I shouldn't well, I shouldn't criticize that way. I I do apologize about that. Everybody has a different oh, a different ear. Yeah, they do. What I like, you know, yeah. they won't see that, but sure. they'll see something else, and that's a good thing. That that's so I do. I don't mean it's to be like, so critical on that. It's, it's like just really kids. tough to oh, it's compete. Okay. It's, it's okay, okay to be critical. I know. Uh, bro country. Yeah. 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 We hate bro Not country. Thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, agree. I mean, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Also, you know how amazing it is what people can do in studios, and then yeah. you see them live. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Uh, you have to be careful here. <laughs> but you know, there's people. There's people that that you even know personally that are stars, and you realize that there's a lot of. Uh, uh, out of pitch, doing yeah. being fixed in there in the studios. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you know they went flat here every time you see them live, and they still go flat there. Yeah. But in the studio, it's dead on. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and yeah. you know, yeah. and that's a lot in uh, pop country. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like yeah, this guy looks good. You know, he's got the look, and every. I don't know. Every song he's got some flat notes in it. If, yeah. You know, yeah. Li- even yeah. live. Yeah. Even though they can even correct those live these days. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah. yeah. They can. But the look is like the look is it's what's important. Look. It is. You know, it's, it's, well, also the songwriting. Right, you know, if you don't have, I'll harken back to David Allen Coe. Uh, you know, you never even call me by my name. Well, that generation of things that needed to be in a country song is different a little bit than what it is today. I mean, yes. You gotta have a girl on the back of a pickup truck, you know. Yeah. You got jeans painted What's the line you always? Yeah. What's the line you always say? We were at a gas station and they I had a speaker. It, yeah. The oh, rodeo. Oh gosh, do I yes. want to say it? Say it. <laughs> yeah. So we heard a song. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pop the, country. Sing it. The hook was "Country Girls Ride the Pole Like a Rodeo." <laughs> <laughs> so we all sang it. The band. Every once in a while, Taylor would bust out. You know, the sad sing. thing is, there'll be a kitchen. <laughs> to that yes yes, yes. yes. even though yes. Yes. you're mocking it we'll be mocking yeah. it you yes. know yeah. 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 somebody go I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we sing it all the time <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know I hate all country girls rob the pole like a rodeo <laughs> You know, it's like, oh my gosh. You know, yeah. 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 But, yeah. but, but the, the flip side is there's somebody going, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why we heard it. It was yeah. getting yeah. blasted. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. 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 So that the whole block could He was very happy. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. getting gas? What yeah. the what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, also, this is another thing I like, too. You realize in Nashville now, uh, it takes six people to write a song. You know, right. I mean, yeah, you look yeah. at the song credits, there's like six people on there. It'd be like us sitting here, and I'll come up with an idea, and we'll just write it just as good as we can. And like, so, 
maybe Taylor did all the work on it, but we we added a little something. Oh, we were just sitting here on it, you yeah, know. Yeah. And yeah. it's like it's like, but we're all getting our part Credits. of that, you know. Yeah. And we yeah. can all go out individually to six of us and say. You know, you put that in your show when you're out there playing by yourself. Yeah, I wrote this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, forget the other four or five people yeah. that helped you. You know, yeah. and you're lying, but you're not you're really lying. lying. You're not totally lying. Totally yeah. lying. So I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. it's a, it's an interesting process, isn't it? It yeah. is. I mean, yeah. I, I, a lot of co-writing going on. Yeah. A lot of co-writing. As my attorney wife tells me all the time, omission is lying. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> She I played a band one time and we were in the studio looking for another song. And this guy who who his guy's name is Michael Reno Harold. He, he is uh, he's a national act and Michael is also now like the king of the they have storytelling festivals, if you can really believe that. And he he gets a lot of his living now going and telling stories. But we we're in the studio and he came in with a couple of songs we were gonna listen to and the girl who played with us in the band said, I really like that song. And she said, can I change a couple of those lines to make it fit me better? And he says, you know, if you mean a the to a the, I'm good with it. You know? <laughs> right, right. So then let's say, who didn't record the song? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, it like, I mean, I, I was in agreement with him, you know. I, I like the song like it is. Oh, but she wanted to change it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so interesting. Yeah. we didn't, you know, he was pretty adamant that. And he, and he wasn't one of like six co-writers. He wrote it, right, you know? right, yeah. Yeah. So he's like, no, I don't think so. Yeah, you know? yeah. Now me, I'm a mercenary. Oh yeah, if you can record it, go ahead, change what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, even, I even have a song called Still This Song. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. You know? Yeah. You know? Still This Song. I'll even, I'll even, you know, you can claim you wrote it, and you can play it for all your friends, tell everybody everything about it, you know? And it's like, I'm fine. Yeah. Well, he's got that on tape, so. <laughs> so. We're going to steal that song. Sure, sure. We're going to play know. it tonight. Sure, that's fine. I mean, Taylor wrote it. It's, 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 I'm, I'm good with that. Um, uh, I've been known in my life to <laughs> be a mercenary songwriter for people, you know? Mm-hmm. If you got 50 bucks... That's not so much these days, but you know, starting out, it's like, heck yeah, I'll write you a song for 50 bucks and you claim it as your own. Because you know, the really cool part is, like 99.9% of the time, I got like $50 in the song that can go anywhere, you know? Right, right, right. So yeah. I really, I considered, you know, that's pretty cool. Right. The first songwriting, actually, we were all there. We did a songwriting oh, little Big Sky. thing in Big Sky, and the guy that was, was Bruce Bowden out of Nashville was there. And, some other Costas, some other people from around the guy Montana. from Poco uh, was there. Yeah, there and uh, but they were saying, hey, if someone steals your song, that's a good, you know, like yeah. that's a good thing. Like, because yeah, people were asking questions, like, how do I, you know, how do I make sure that it's like I have all the, you know, eyes dotted and the T's crossed, and they're like. You know, if you worry that much about your song getting stolen, I mean, if well, it's if it gets famous, then that's a good thing. You yeah, know, yeah. So. Well, yeah. I I, I kind of have a. I kind of had that happen to me. I don't know if you're familiar with a girl whose name was Juice Newton. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. Juice, I gave her guitar player. Um, I was pitching songs, and I, I pitched her guitar player that. And sure enough, um, they recorded the song with the words somewhat changed, you know? And it was like, ouch, but, you know, it's... it. Um, it happens, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. you know, she something. changed it enough. They changed it enough to where I knew, even the people that around me knew. But, but I mean, it was not the same song, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but that's a chance you take. And you yeah. know, do you know y'all know Todd Snyder? Oh yeah. yeah. You know Todd's story about beer run, right? No, uh, I haven't oh, heard that so I got flat stolen from him, <laughs> uh, and so I don't know if y'all know Todd, but. So Todd runs into him, and Todd goes, you know you really didn't write that song. I wrote, you copied it verbatim. And he said, well, yeah, that's just the way it is in in music business. And the same guy wrote uh, uh, a song called If Tomorrow Never Comes. So, (laughs) So he says, you know what? 
I got a song called Tomorrow Never Comes. <laughs> 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 and she says, I, this is a song right around, and I'm going to go out there and do mine. And I'm going to do Beer Run, too. Both of them before you get your chance. I wish those would pass it around, but I'm going to do two in a row. Mm -hmm. And mine's going to be Tomorrow Never Comes and Beer Run. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I mean, yeah, that's, so, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's strange about songs in the music business and uh, but okay this is something several people have asked me to ask you the name of your band where did that come from so uh fred and i have been playing for a number of years um we started playing in the bars in sheridan so yeah, yeah so the two tracks i was an archaeologist growing up and um in my former life and so you know, we'd go out even even with work and stuff. Go out on all the two track roads and everything. Okay. So, so, so it's two, two track, track roads, roads yeah. But since then, you know, it's like we had a welcome to, to 1979, a, a an mastering analog. an analog record mastering place. You know, reached out and they're like, man, we got to talk to you because the two tracks. You know, yeah. so it's like they were there's thinking two tracks. Two tracks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's kind of which is cool. I, I, yeah. Yeah, so I was kind of thinking maybe that is where it was. Yeah. You know, that was my, when we were all putting money in the That's where people wanted <laughs> to come pot. from. Yeah. Well, one of the t-shirts that he designed had the, the yeah, two-track, right. which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. One of my oh, yeah. favorites. So, you know, that's kind of what I thought. Mm -hmm. But then the two-track roads make mm -hmm. just perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 So, so It's nice to where you can think whatever you want about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's got two tracks in his own. I know. Yeah. It makes for a good graphic design because in the winter we'll do two ski tracks. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. We're going to do the needle in the arm for this. There was yeah, it was all over the table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, lots of I mean, this, was a, this was a different. I had, I had <laughs> one track eventually becomes right steep. after Snoop Dogg. Yeah, I had, I had a drummer. He's a drummer playing with me now, but he was single, and he asked me to do a podcast on this couple because he had the hots for the girl and he'd seen her Facebook page. He said, "Man, I'll give you fifty dollars if you'll interview them." Okay, so I call him up, <laughs> and, and I go, because he wants to see if she's really that hot. So I go, to, I go to their house, yeah, yeah. I get there, and we get ready to do it, and I look down on their carpet, and there was every animal of the, of the, my variety, uh, it was, could be in there, and I'm like, oh my God gosh so so I'm sitting everything up and uh, they are also snorting and injecting stuff that I didn't even know what it was you know it's like oh this is going to be interesting right. so um, they sing and it's horrible absolutely horrible and and I record it and I'm nice and, and I, I leave and I Tell John that um, no, <laughs> she, he, she doesn't look like a picture, you know, <laughs> you know, and and they're horrible. So there's another musician. That, oh, I was not even going to air it, and uh, uh, but the girl uh, says, "Are you ever going to send me a Facebook text? Are you ever going to air it, this thing?" I said, "Yeah, I, mean, I try to put her off." Yeah. She said, well, I want to know because I'm sending someone to kill you. <laughs> and I said, I said well, you, you want it up before he kills me? And that really didn't go over good. You know, you know, I mean, you want me to do it before or after he kills me? So, so I, I laughed and joked about it. And then there's a guy here in town that was a drummer. He, but he's also a um, uh, psychologist. And she, he had been, uh, the girl came to see him. And he called me up and he said, hey, you still got that uh, uh, recording of, of them? Oh, and you can't believe uh, the name of the band, Sexy Monastery. I can't keep that. <laughs> no. that's, so, that's great. So, so I said, yeah, but I'm not going to air it. He said, please do, because she's going to murder you for real. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, for real? He said, just as a favor to me, air it. <laughs> so, so I did. I did. And um, uh, it was horrible. But I aired it. Then the couple broke up, and she didn't care anymore. <laughs> um, it, you know, it was like, okay, so, so I survived it. And then this is one of those stories, you know, that we were talking about. It was so horrible, but I heard it anyway. And there's a guy, a local musician, comes up to me and says, man, that band's so hot. All he needs is a little production. 
Pedro, you can't be, you can't so be serious. <laughs> and he said, yeah. He said, there was a band back in the in the 80s called Tim Buck, Tim Buck Three. And he said, I think I think they could be just like them. I'm like, no, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> His guitar was not in tune. No, they can't. She couldn't. It was just terrible. You can look it up on my pocket. It's oh, terrible. we're going to listen to it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I mean, it is. It is. Sexy gonna, Monastery. Sexy Monastery. Sexy Monastery is better. I mean, sexy Monastery. Yeah, okay. I, mean, wow. I mean, the name itself. You know, it's sexy. <laughs> and, then, and then I had a, another girl do the podcast, and she said, do you know so-and-so? And I said, yeah. And she, she said, she got a band that she threatened to kill me. And I said, did y'all have a little incident? She said, yeah, her boyfriend was hitting on me. And, and, and she come up and told me she was going to kill me. And I said, well, according to, you know, her counselor, she was going to. <laughs> take her, take but, her seriously. But now she's, she's gone to California or somewhere. Bummer. Well, any band that has the name Sexy in in the band name, they're, they there's a good chance they might not be sexy, right? Oh well, oh, so, oh oh yeah, you can listen to her song. I think it's everyone wants me, but I'm only going to give you them, you know, to her boyfriend. Everybody everybody's <laughs> loved me. Everybody wants to have sex with me, but I'm only having sex with you. Yeah, well, that, that, that's, that's like that, that's like that's like, commitment. That's commitment. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we're getting all sorts of song ideas today. <laughs> <laughs> we can go home and write. Yeah, that's that's inspiring. inspiring. You guys, you so guys inspiring. more fun than my normal guest. You know, yeah. uh, one of the things I really love about it is um, your sense of humor. <laughs> they are we, funny. We laugh a lot. Yeah. We spend yeah. a lot of time in a smelly ass van. Yeah, uh, yeah that'll, that'll do it too. I, I, I do understand that. But. Good sense of humor helps. Yeah. Until we can get out and take over people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're adopting me. They, I brought it up a few times. Yeah. Not heard any response back. My wife doesn't know about it. <laughs> me yeah. too. No, honey, just me. Yeah. Sorry. Being adopted. Yeah. 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 So, are we recording again anytime soon? Um. It'll like, probably be another year or so before we yeah. do another recording. So August 25th, our fourth, our la- our last album came out August 25th. So um, usually it's like every two years. Sure. Uh, have you already started working on new material? Well, we've got we did a Kickstarter yeah. to to fundraise, and we actually have. First things we first, we've got we have to four songs we got to write for people. Oh, that's they pretty They chipped cool. in for that. So, oh, that's so, part of part of the mm-hmm. deal for mm-hmm. that yeah. you would write songs for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That is but, actually but we sure. added a it's zero really... to like you know your fifty dollars price. We <laughs> yeah, added a zero yeah, sure. to it. Just so. But we did it. We did it on our last Kickstarter, and two of the songs ended up on this album. Oh really? Yeah. So it was. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. So it's one of them was a, a friend of ours. His dad was a um, was a worked in a fire lookout tower in the Bighorn Mountains. Yeah. And. Uh, and he had a transistor radio and talked to another guy on the other side, a guy from the Crow Reservation. Right. And um, they they were up there for a couple seasons, and and uh, and that's all they talked to, you know, just yeah. talked to each other. Well, then they went off to the Vietnam War. They were both stationed in Germany, and they happened to be stationed together in Germany. So oh. they met over there. Wow. So that was the song that that's his son came to me and said, hey, you know, can you write this song? So I went into his office with a little tape recorder didn't didn't tell him and I said Jared told me to ask you about this this story sure. so he told me the whole story and then we wrote a song about it and it's one of my favorites it's a great yeah, song. so yeah. so yeah it's it's actually it's actually pretty motivating to like to do that and like get inspired by other people's stories here's yeah. the other part that's a little scary about that what if the song sucks yeah no, <laughs> what if the guy goes what if the other person goes you know, I just don't like that song. Yeah. <laughs> well, like it doesn't bad. end up on the album. It, 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 yeah. It, yeah, yeah, and and it's one of those things where well, there's no money back guarantee on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We just mm-hmm. yeah, we, just we do a, we do a home recording. You know, a good you know good yeah. quality multi track sure. home recording in our little studio rehearsal space, and then we give it yeah give that to them, and then if it uh, well if you it been... sticks for us, then we yeah. then we like it, and we start playing it in live right. shows, and then. It, then it ends up maybe on the next record. And if record. you don't like it, I mean, you're right, you don't like it, yeah. but I'm obligated, then yeah. you don't have to play it. Yeah. Well, there's one so we had to re-record it because you had the wrong name of the river in the town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh, come back over, guys. we got to do this again. trying to take some artistic liberties, but... <laughs> yeah, he was trying to take an artistic liberty, like, but okay. then the guy was like, that's not the right river. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so we yeah. changed it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have some pretty interesting stories. Um, uh, what else have we missed that we need to know? <laughs> well, you know, we thought we thought if the interview was going to go bad, he was going to start talking about what happened to him this morning. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I got to go to the restaurant. Uh, I'll, 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 like I told you, there's nothing. There's, I, you know what? If I push it over to adult content, you get more listeners. So yes, uh, no. I, I do think, though, one thing that I, I'll say that, that is that they help me out. I was, I've never sang in a band before, and um, a harmonies and uh, paintbrush feels of Julie is extremely good about. They all are, but Julie has a vision for dynamics and 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 where everybody should fit yeah singing wise and so when they talked me into doing it um i was so relaxed because they made me feel relaxed right and they were patient and worked with me and and it, it was a new challenge to drum and sing and i love sure. it i would never go back the other way wow. so i'm always trying to work at it more and more but i have them to thank and i have really her to thank for you're a great singer to to because i always wanted to but anyway that's on that new song that they wrote they they've written songs for people and they don't suck they, yeah. They're good. Yeah. good. I mean, I'm just saying they, they don't they, because they get they're good songs and 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 one of them uh, some of them are on this last album. They tell a story. Each one of them does, and some of them are very personal. Right. And knowing them, it it, it is even it even is uh, it means more. I, I know to me, and then I get to sing on it. But it's right. some of my favorite songs. One of them is a, a waltz. And it's about her kids. Right. And and. All the stuff that Dave writes. The cool thing is they both have a different approach to songs. Right. Uh, Dave is more outdoorsy where it goes, which is lovely. And Julie is a bit more personal <clears throat> about uh, about people, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is a lovely true. thing. It it, it 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 and so you have you have that's where we we're always trying to figure out. Let's not play something the same way. You know, I I think one time they asked me. I said, well, lay down a track or something. What I did is I told him, I said, look, here's where I think we're going. I could shuffle to every song here. Yeah, so right. if that tells you something where, right. though I love shuffles, but let's, you know, I like a little rock beat or a sure. little, uh, uh, a, Mexican little uh, a Mexican beat yeah, where Julie sure. was like, and so we do that, and everybody's so open. But anyway, I just had to say that because I really appreciate it. I, I get to actually sing a bit, which I've never well, been singing. I'm getting ready to ask you. <clears throat> uh, so how hard is singing harmony? You know, it, it, it is hard. It's hard. <laughs> it is very hard. And what I used to do at home, uh, my wife would always comment when she'd come home from work and I'd, I'd be practicing, but I was always singing the songs because I thought one day I'm going to try it. But the timing had to be on. It's like right. I have to learn this way to be able to focus on what I'm drumming but be able to sing and hit right. the notes. And, again, they were when the first song that we sang where all of us have different harmony parts. It's like, there's no way I can do this. And Julie and Dave Taylor are like, no, you can do this. The pitch is right, and here's where it's at. And so mm -hmm. they would record it. I'd go home and just air yeah, drum sure. and practice, practice it, it over and they, over. They would record your part for you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And, and then I he'd just, come back and nail it. Yeah, and it every just, time. You know, like the brain <laughs> memory. But it, it is hard, but I love the challenge now. I, I would not, it would be boring just to drum. Oh, yeah, I'm and, sure. And not do, so I'm grateful for that. Well, you know, it is, it is. It, Singing harmony is almost as good a gift as being able to play an instrument. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people that are really good singers cannot sing a note of harmony. Yeah. You know, and it's it's easy to drift too if you can't hear. I was yeah. thinking as a drummer, yeah. you know, your mix would have to be good yeah. because if you, yeah. you are if you particularly if you're fairly new to it, yeah. if you can't hear it well, right. it's easy to get the wrong mm -hmm. notes mm -hmm. because you yeah. know. The harmony notes, if you hear them separate of the of the song, sound wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about harmony is yeah. is that people don't understand that what you're singing is, is, is yeah, it sounds great when everybody's doing it, but you separate those things and they're weird, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I always admired like Levon Helm, yeah, who is one of the 
one of the, one of the best, Don Henley. Don Henley, yeah. I mean, there are many others that I'm sure. not mentioning, but I'd watch them and it'd be like, wow, man, that that is just killer good. Yeah. You know, I'd like to do that one day, maybe. Yeah. And uh, I would think Jimmy Fadden from the Dirt Band, he can do that and play yes. Monica. Yes, and yes, Monica. yes, I know. I mean, I mean it's like you, you know, know, talented little bugger. Oh yeah, that, that just that just you know. Yeah. And he's actually a pretty good guitar player too. So, wow. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that, if you want to take it to Let's see how difficult I can make it. I'm going to play harmonica, sing yeah. harmony, and play drums. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the cool thing is, I think people have, have said before, other musicians who heard us and and hear all the vocals, they were like, "Man, that's that's where to go." Sure. And I always think of the story of the Eagles. Yeah. When they were so-so, and their producer was like, mm, "It's just not quite there." This this, and then all of a sudden he hears them and they're all singing. Yeah. And he's like, "That's it. Yeah, that's the sound." And that took off from there. I mean, yeah. harmony singing is the it's key it's to the, it's the it's the separator yeah, between an okay band and a really good band. Yeah. Also yeah. playing bass and singing harmonies. Oh true. man, yeah. yeah. And uh, be the first two um, albums they had that I was not on. Fred wasn't singing yet on those yeah. either. So they did have some harmonies in the studio, but as far as live, you guys were only doing do, you know, two part harmonies. Yeah. So since we've joined, it's all there's been you know. Pretty much every song on the albums, not every one, um, but have four part sure. on them. So it's, yeah, and then it's, some of the old songs we went back and yes. yeah, yeah, added, yeah. Added and again, so. Julie's yeah, good yeah. about that. It had an ear. She's like, you guys can be on this one. Yeah, and it was already recorded, but she's like, here's where you need to go. Here's right. where yeah, you need to go. and that's, and that's, that's a good down. thing because yeah. it's lovely. I, I love it. She, yeah. she, I've played with people like her who have a natural talent for hearing harmonies. Yeah, she does. And, and you don't have to. I, she and I could sit down here and play and. She would listen like th three seconds and know where her part would be. Right. Yep. You know, yep. for me, if you show me my part, I'm really good. But you know, sometimes I can hear it. Sometimes me I can't. too. Yeah. And, and, and as, as a I'm bass like, player, yeah, I just hear it. I don't. Yeah, Tay yeah. yeah. is another yeah. natural. Yeah. He's, he's, well, I'm Dave too. It's also kind of hard to sing the lead and play bass. Yeah, my bass line is totally different if I'm singing and and yeah, and playing yeah. playing bass. Yeah, thank goodness I don't have to front any songs. That one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> that, that could be bad. Not yet. <laughs> I, I also have another trick that, that is, I've got it finally down pretty good, but I can play bass and play harmonica in a neck brace. Oh, oh wow. wow. Okay. And, uh, which is... Uh, yeah, split brain a little bit. Oh, that's Man. a little, little bit sketchy. You know? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I might, might even miss a note, you know. Sure. Uh, oh, the fact uh, you yeah. But the... Um, it took a little practice to to, to do that, mm -hmm. yeah. and I still do it fairly regularly. But there again, I'm playing a more um, Bob Dylan harmonica yeah. part as opposed to playing a um, yeah John uh, I hate John Popper. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but but I, I do play it totally different. I, mm -hmm. I guess in Nashville they call it uh, would would I'm a I'm a blues harmonica player, but I also play the uh, Charlie McCoy, who was a a uh, probably the most recorded harmonica player in Nashville over the years. And I learned that style. I can't do that and play mm -hmm. play bass. But I can play Bob Dylan all day. And play sure. He does yeah. Bob Dylan style when so. he's doing cello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I mean, you, can do, you can do that. It's a That's, simple cello line underneath it. I, it was a simple, you know. it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a simple tick tock bass too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, no, there's nothing fancy nothing if I'm playing harmonica. You. you know, yeah. it is your basic, yeah. you know, your basic Deals what you're yeah. getting, so yeah. So, and I've had yeah. to adjust some bass lines, uh, especially when I get to choruses. Um, you know, before we release them or before we start performing them, I'll have to maybe dumb the bass line down yeah. a bit just so I can do my harmony sure. part right. I you mean, know, yeah. it, it I happens. Mean, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, you, you do. Yeah. Really good musicians have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and great musicians, I guess, not Sting, I guess, can do it all. Yeah, yeah. we just yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, yes, I, that comes to mind for singing bass players who actually also play good bass while they're doing it, yes. you know? Right. So, yeah. 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 It's a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think when music doesn't become a work in progress, it's probably time it's to say, right. like, I've done Agreed. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, yeah. You know, when the when the desire to if if you're still playing the very same stuff you played as a kid, you're probably still <laughs> playing the same stuff you played as a kid. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 We know some. Of <laughs> we we know some. I know them too. Yeah. 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 I do too. They do it well, but, 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 yeah, but it's the same. You know what you're going to get. Uh -huh. That's for sure. You know, yeah. which I guess there's I guess there is um 
a beauty to it. Yeah. If you're going to yeah. sit in, you don't have to practice because it's the nope. same set same list. Set list every time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Next oh, yeah. yeah. We have a band here <laughs> who plays a lot that has the very same set list they had the day they started playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They get a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People know what they're going to get. Sure. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it works. I mean, sure. You know, unless yeah. you've heard it like 12 times. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> but it, you guys actually sound like a fun bunch of musicians to play with, though, because you sound pretty pretty open to the process. Yeah. yeah. We try so, to keep it. Don't pretty, take ourselves too seriously, open. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Not too. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's kind of like with anything. It's like if you're, you know, doing sports or skiing or whatever, if you're not falling, you're not True. trying. I agree. You know? I, yeah, so I, it's I, like I, I always kind of look at it like you just got to, you know, half, I, if I hit a sour note in the middle of a solo it's like well it's because yeah. i'm always trying to play yeah, a yeah. better solo than the last <laughs> sure. one and sometimes yeah. you miss one well you know uh you hit them hit it and call it jazz right yeah, yeah that's right, right. Yeah. hit it again yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah. of the best drummers uh, read about in modern drummer magazine which are my heroes and all of them have always said if you're not making mistakes you're not growing that's true and mm -hmm. when they do make a mistake though that's the difference as pros you're not going to really know it yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. Because they, yeah. but, but it's it's not because yeah, they cover it so hide. quickly. But the fact I get what they're saying. It's yeah. like yeah. if you're not making a mistake, you are not growing. You're not you're not pushing yourself to be better mm -hmm. and better. And it's like oh okay. See, so what well, I'm really good at covering because I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned the art of cover better than I've learned the art of covering. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I'm a good cover. It's a lot harder on bass. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 You, you throw out that random yeah. note in bass, yeah. oh, and yeah. everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. 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 They go, oh, they can tell when a bass player is wrong. But see, we also learn to not make a face when we do it. Yeah. That's, That's the most important yeah. part. Yeah. Really part. You just, you just yep. pretend Absolutely. like it never happened, and it's like you can make as many mistakes as you want. The thing I love is you'll play a show, and you'll think that, you know, Kai, we just weren't really on it tonight. You'll say something, I didn't hear that, you know, it's like, you know, I thought you guys sounded great. Mm -hmm. Well, you obviously you weren't playing, and obviously <laughs> yeah. not a musician because, right, yeah, you right. know, we yeah. all made mistakes. Yeah. And, and, yeah. 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 and it's a nice thing. We do have a lot of fun. When we do hit the stage, everybody's everybody's oh, there. It's yeah, like, right. you know, yeah. we yeah. want to play well. That's right. the whole exactly. thing. But we want to yeah. have fun. Sure. You know, but and I love that because I, I do take it serious. I, I mm -hmm. want it to be good. Not sure. just for me. I, I mean, if you're going to travel all that way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to give, don't, don't give the up. best <laughs> that you can. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, totally. And, but we all have fun doing it, too. I love that. You know, if you we don't, laugh a lot. If you don't have fun doing it, again, you're in the wrong business. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If you take it too seriously, and there's people that do that too. Sure. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that kind of takes the fun out of it. Yeah. I mean, music yeah. should be a, a joyful thing anyway. Yeah. You know, Agreed. It, yeah. it, no matter if you do have to play the same song like 16 times. Well, I guess when the joy goes away, then it's time to. Yeah. You know, See, I'm, the, I'm the type of person. I like rehearsal. I I think it's fun to go play music with these guys for yeah. a couple. Oh of yeah, hours. I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I, some people dread it or put you know, and I'm like, I like rehearsal. I think it's fun. I kind of do too. It's yeah. kind of it. it Although sometimes with the people I play with, so we're there at rehearsal and we're off playing something that we're not, we don't even do, just because somebody's there and they hit a riff or something. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, oh, you know, uh, here we are doing free ride or something and we don't even play that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, fun, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, fun, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is which makes the practice kind of fun because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I always think with with people like you know sometimes I'd about just as soon do. Practice is, is go play, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. I mean, yeah, it, but you have to like the people that you're doing it. Yes, with. that's that's yeah. extremely important. It, it, it is. really is. The chemistry yeah. has to work off stage as it does on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's extremely. You can important. have the best guitar player yeah. in the world, but if, if it doesn't not, work, if they're not, I, I agree. Not cool it's, it's and not not, go. not fun to be around. Yeah, not gonna then go. Then it's like not even. It doesn't even. Yeah. It's not even work. It's the show I'll do tomorrow night. Well, we totally you. unrehearsed with a. We do a, I play in a band called the Handsome Johnnies, and this is a uh, John Prine tribute mm -hmm. band. Oh, so that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Handsome yeah. Johnnies is fun. It's, yeah. it's it. a lot of fun. But, you know, all of us play in different ensembles, but we'll get together and do that. Okay. And we try to all pick different songs, and we'll, we'll, we'll bring up guests to do it, a John Prine mm -hmm. song, too. But there's no rehearsing to that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, we know each other. We've all played music with each other. But... We should probably rehearse that. But you know the songs. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah. I mean, the, the guy so. at the back 40, Joe, the heart player, he was, Joe, yeah. he was saying we had to check out the handsome. 
Johnny. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Joe. Joe's got a band. Did you hear Joe's band up no, there? No, he just he came to our show, okay. so we talked for a bit. Yeah, Joe. Joe is a drummer and a harmonica player, right? But he can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, he, actually, Joe might have two bands. Uh, there's a guy. There's there's a couple of musicians here in town that play with the play with like three different bands. And they're different. Joe's one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy Pedro, I told you, thought the people were great. Pedro plays in a <laughs> bunch of different ensembles. But, um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's a fun, it, it's a fun thing. I, uh, but we love John Prine. Yeah, yeah, John. Yesterday was John's birthday. Mm -hmm. nice. and we were actually that's going to be a combination. John Prine, John Prine's birthday, my birthday, and I've got a visit Kevin Bridges. Cool. We'll have October birthday, so. Nice. So, but sometimes, I do understand, sometimes I'm a mercenary player as a bass player or as a harmonica player, fiddle player, and it's not the same as being in a band and having the rehearsal. You know, I go and I try to be as professional as I can be, and if there's a chance to make it fun, then it is, but it's not the same as, as having the camaraderie. And a lot of it's the camaraderie is what makes makes it as much as anything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I don't absolutely. know. In this case, that'd be a little sketchy for me, you know. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you know. The husband and wife dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Fred and I know when to disappear. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, Fred, what? No, they left. I, I, I have actually been a part of that before. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, I'm that I'm a member yeah. and I'm one of the party. Yeah, we, 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 we're good at that. I, I, yeah. also, I also have this, this belief. What do you mean? I, it's all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> yeah, it's, come on. It's all sunshine and rainbows over here. Not on Mars. <laughs> There's never any tension. <laughs> so, you know, so, yeah, that's something that a lot of people don't realize, I guess. But, um, uh, yeah, it's, um, I admire you for being, <laughs> being able to do that. Because uh, it's a, like a 24-7 deal. Yeah, we've yeah. learned a lot about all each other, you know, mm -hmm. and we know yeah. the, everybody's tics, and we oh, know, yeah. like, yeah. and it's um, it's taken years, but I feel like it's really fun to yeah, travel cool. with these guys. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. yeah, it just gets better and better. We can definitely have disagreements, but it doesn't last long, and that's yeah. the lovely thing. Well, you could, if, you, if you didn't, I mean, that would be, that wouldn't be real. No, and no, I'm no. just saying, and it's not like, you know, because we all have our, I'm definitely moody myself, and I know, when he's I know my, yeah. <laughs> We're going to make t-shirts that say, keep Fred fed. <laughs> it gets very quiet. <laughs> but I mean, everybody, we can have our disagreements on things, and even on the songs, but nobody holds a grudge, and it's like, oh, okay, work it out. And nobody I mean, has a problem saying, yeah, that's much better. Let's do it, and we just do it happily. That's, 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 that. I love that. I mean, that's a beautiful thing, yeah. because, um, I would never expect anyone. Probably would not enjoy being around them if they agree with me on every every exactly thing, right? exactly. Yeah, I got that's right. I got off on some deep ends anyway. You know, yeah. you're agreeing with me that I got to kind of worry about you. It's kind of like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, I'm okay with people disagreeing with me. Yeah. I can I can have a civil discussion over over anything and and not get mad or have a have a problem with it. You know, but yeah, I worry about people that would agree with me too, too much. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's well, like, yeah, we yeah. just had a disagreement this morning about what constitutes a shart. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> and, and we, actually, there was some. There was some. There was some. Uh, no. <laughs> and, on that, and on that note, I have to go pee. <laughs> Thank you. He's gonna go pee. Oh my God. What did you say in for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet. She went there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love I love this band. <laughs> I, if you guys were terrible as musicians, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I saw. <laughs> yeah, we decided that if it gets caught on the door jam, then it's not a shark. <laughs> <laughs> but if it reaches the outside, then it, it, it is. That was, that was our definition. So where did it go? <laughs> which, which is the definition? Uh, <laughs> that was basically it. You know, yeah. if, if it gets 
trapped at the door and <laughs> it's not and if it escapes <laughs> then yeah. it is and, and it was also if your pants need to be up and on for it to you know or if <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we went or into detail it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah oh, oh yeah. yeah the pants have to be on there's no uh, doubt about that yeah, oh yeah the pants have to be on yeah oh, otherwise goodness. yeah <laughs> I, had a, I had a guy on the show and first concert he ever played uh he played with todd snyder and he drove and he was late getting there and he ran on stage and sure enough, he shot in his pants. <laughs> oh, my goodness. On the, because he, I drove, he, drove, he had to drive like six hours, and he got there. First show there, he played, he was real nervous. Also, his back was real real tender, so he would put, like, being gay all up and down his back. And he said, I smell like being gay, you know. <laughs> and then I sit down to play, and I shot. Well, good thing you smell like being gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, and, and so, so he said, and then, so there I was, and it was over, and Todd was wanting to make conversation. And he was like, dude, you just don't know. I, I, I can't really talk right now. You know? You know, so, I got to go to the bathroom. Uh, so, oh, my gosh. So, you know, well... Uh, <laughs> Have you ever well, started, Taylor? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's getting real. It's well, getting here's real. a wonderful thing. You just probably fell into the only person that's ever done an interview to to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I would think so. I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, we uh, like to carve out original territory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that what that is? Uh, okay. I can see other podcasts where, where this wouldn't go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little that's more why, serious, and, that, and that's why I'm proud of this podcast. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, it, it's um, it's not every day. <laughs> right, right. Yep. I, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, uh, I'd like to see um, Taylor Mahan's um, version of this. That's the David Allen Coe. You ever listen to his, his son's podcast? I could hear him with the shark. line. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Shiflett, uh, yeah, uh, who's a country star and sometimes a Foo Fighter, uh, and he has a fairly serious podcast, you know, yeah, that's why I don't have as many listeners, maybe, as, as, as they do, you know? But I, you know, there again, is this not the entertainment business? I mean, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, music's a part of it, but entertainment is also in We talk too. about all sorts of weird crap. I would have, I would have never, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> Literally. Uh, like you said, when people are agreeing with you too much when you get down to the bay, it's like this. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, we wrote a song with Tim and Ann last night. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, do you guys remember it? We had it recorded. Yeah, it was just about all the the little um, insecurities people have. With your bodies. Yeah, with so your bodies. Boogers so it, and... Boogers and How did that song go? farts and all that fun stuff. Gosh, I must have yeah. gone to bed. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a, yep. it's a good I think song. Fred had gone yeah, to bed. It's, it's right. actually, it's, all right. it's actually, we have it recorded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. It's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I'll give you my email address. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll send it to you. Uh, uh, we'll send you the voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I would love it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Might want to get yeah, about it was, one. And it no. was a co-write though between six people. So, yeah. so, so, so you need to add a line, and then we'll make it seven. Well, yeah, yeah. you're gonna write it with us. Well, yeah, because you know I have. Um, <laughs> uh, it could okay. also be filed in the category of wow, that's really bad. I don't think anybody go threaten to kill you. <laughs> I don't. I, I so specifically so remember you the line. Uh, everybody's got a bunt, butt vent scent. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right, all right. That's enough. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay. Every, oh yeah, everybody's got a uh, chin or yeah, yeah, every we'll woman's got a chin hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna need a drink after this. <laughs> uh, it was late night. Yeah, it was, oh, yeah. it was late night. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Fred was in bed. Yeah, y'all, y'all have overcome Pete Warnick and his wife beater in his underwear, <laughs> <laughs> which was which was. <laughs> Pretty strange. Uh, yeah, no one's walking uh, around in their underwear yet. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> That's really. Uh, 
I can't say anything. I ran a neck, naked 10K, so. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> Holy cow. I liked it so much I did it twice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Me? I've never even heard of such a thing. I know. I didn't naked either. I, just, I, I used to run a lot of races, and I saw that advertised, and I thought, huh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I, that's a story nobody else will have to tell. <laughs> so, so, so I went and did it to make a long story short and a lot of details pass so I'm leaving and I and I put my uh, clothes on to leave and I get to the gate and realize that I had forgot oh, I put on a pair of shorts and I get to the gate and I realize I didn't have the code so I had to drive back and I was so embarrassed because I had on shorts and everybody else was naked I was like, it was like all of a sudden I'm, I'm thinking you know, you'd think it would be the other way around it's like Oh damn! I'm the dude with shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> so I look like some kind of creep. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I going to have to do a lot of it. There was no drinking, right? Going on. This, this is a all- party. <laughs> I'm worried, sir. I'm worried. <laughs> I told you you didn't want to bring me on a lot of stuff. So, I was going to ask, like, was there anybody else there? Sure. The preacher was there. <laughs> They're like, wow, you're the only one that showed up. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I, w- I was not. And one of the things I learned is... Uh, Naked 10 k a lot of different shapes and sizes. <laughs> <laughs> Bounce factor would not believe it. Uh-huh. And, oh, God, I don't know. oh, what the hell? I fucked this up already. Okay, so I pass a guy. I pass a guy, and I said, you know, you'd go a lot faster uh, if, if that tool was just a, like, a whole lot smaller. <laughs> you know, and, he looks at me and grins and goes, I'll take the tool and stuff. <laughs> 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 uh, I'd, rather, home I'd rather be slow. <laughs> <laughs> Things on the list you just really don't want to see. Exactly. You don't want to see. No, no, you don't. I'll Sorry. take the banana it's not, hammock. <laughs> it's not just moves, you know. That, like, that reminds me of uh, Rag Cooter's album, Chicken Skin Music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just the title. Not just the music. The, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Rye, you know, um, um, God, just drew a blank. I just put it into that thought and conversation. The whole kind of sucks sometimes. <laughs> yes, it does. I know. Flaco Jimenez. Do you know who Flaco Jimenez is? Oh, was? gosh, yes. Okay. My dad Flaco. met him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's that's since we started that conversation. Flaco Jimenez. Yeah. Heck yeah. With the Texas Tornadoes. Yeah. Freddie Fender and Ry Cooter. Cooter. Yeah, he yeah. he he's still going. Yeah, he is still going. And you he's know, gotta be a hundred. Oh man, I, I he I saw a picture of him. I don't know how old he is. He looks good. They were interviewing him, but he was the he had I remember my dad was thrilled and introduced me to him and he had done some stuff with Buck Owens. Yeah. And then which I love Buck Owens well, and I then with uh um, uh, Dwight Yoakam, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, the Texas Tornadoes with Freddie Fender, that group, that was the first time where I'd heard the uh, Tex Mex where yeah. they'd mix uh, English with Spanish, yeah. and it oh, so good. But yeah. that guy is killer good, yeah, he is, he, Jeez. he really is. I mean, yeah, uh, but since we had that conversation, you know, you're probably you're probably one of the few people I could have that conversation with, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, Flacco is just amazing, yeah, Dad. Well, that was the thing, Dad introduced me. A lot of them, and then that whole line I could mention many other Mexican sure. accordion players. Sure, Ramon Ayala, just, just yeah, yeah. Well, just with, the, with, with Cajun accordion players, there's a yeah. ton of them. Yes, know, yes, nobody yeah. Nobody knows them, but yeah, yeah. Play, playing with them as a drummer, it, it is killer good. Playing with a great accordion player is like playing with a great lead guitar player. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. You just want to dance when I'm playing that stuff. Sure. It's like, man, I can't help but yeah, yeah, that's yeah, wonderful. It I love dancing to it too, yeah. and drinking to it. But not forget drinking. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yep. dancing yep. party music. Yeah, guy, Flaco Jimenez. I just yeah. read, read, he's awesome. He's awesome. Yep. Uh, I saw uh, him, him, Doug Psalm, uh, which was pretty good. They were good. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what else do we not need to know? <laughs> 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 uh, oh, oh, we got all sorts. Of, we could be here all day. We got all sorts of stories. <laughs> where, where are you guys headed next? Um, we're well. So, Dragonfly Wine Market tonight. Um, we're actually going to race over to Knoxville and play the WDBX Blue Plate Special. Yes, I'm on Thursday tomorrow. morning, tomorrow yeah. morning, and then turn around and come back and play the Gray Eagle Patio in sure. Asheville. Yeah, and then. Uh, if the weather cooperates, we have a house concert um, at a friend's place here, or in Asheville. Oh, Friday. Um, on Friday, and then down to Georgia uh, to Pono Acres, another concert series down there, um, north of Atlanta. And then we fly home. We and fly home really early on. Shows around the region. we got to be up back. super early on Sunday yeah. to get to well, Atlanta. should be close to Atlanta and not... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not too far, but it'll be an early morning for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. That sounds good. Well, I'm sure you will uh, find the dragonfly interesting tomorrow night. <laughs> and, um, tonight. 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 <laughs> You're tomorrow. You're going to find it. <laughs> 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 tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You're going to find it interesting. Hey, if you turn up tonight, <laughs> if you turn up tonight, we'll do some John Bryan. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I have a prior commitment, but I'll see what I can do. After this, I kind of... I would like to uncommit the prior commitment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do appreciate you guys coming and stopping and taking the time to yeah. do this. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I apologize if I embarrassed anyone. <laughs> well, really, them, not so I'm fine with these guys. <laughs> we kind of understand, but I, I, I'm sorry if <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank y'all for coming Uh, today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh,